Hello everybody and welcome back to another Addicted Fishing 101 video. My name is Jordan Kennedy and today we're going to take the easy steps and show you how to put line on a bait caster reel. So if you want to learn more on how to put any kind of line on a bait caster reel and the mechanics of that reel, stay tuned, it's coming at you right now. All right, so first things first today, you guys, if you have never seen us before, we're Addicted Fishing. We aim to entertain, educate, and inspire anglers like you to get out there on the water and have more fun and learn more about fishing. If you guys haven't already, go down here, hit subscribe, hit that little thumbs up, and hit that bell notification so that you see when these videos come out. We have all kinds of content on how-tos, a lot of fun fishing content, and little stuff just like this for you beginners out there to get started and get out there on the water. So to get things going here, what we're going to do, what I have here is a steelhead fishing rod. This works on any single kind of fishing rod, whether it's trout, salmon, saltwater, freshwater, anything like that, bass, anything. So what we're going to do today is go over the basics of the bait caster reel. What I have here is a steelhead rod in my hand because we're in the northwest here. This is what we fish for. And I have a 30 pound braided line, but this works for any kind of monofilament, braided line, fluorocarbon, or any sort of dacron you're going to put on any sort of bait casting reel. So first off, the what is a bait casting reel is what we have here is an open face click reel with the spinning handle just like so. The difference in between a bait caster and a spinning reel is basically the mechanics of it and the ease of use. Each of these have a different realm for different types of fisheries and it really comes down to personal preference. There's certain styles of fishing that this works better for but at the same time this is a spinning reel and it's used for the exact same kind of fishing with a different adaption. So this is a spinning, this is a bait caster. So what we're going to do here to get started, what I'm going to do, and this works great if you have a two-piece rod, but I like to do first off is take it apart and only use the one half. You don't need that whole rod in your hand making a big mess and having to thread your line through every single eye down to your reel to get started here. What I'm going to do first is I'm just going to take my line here, my braided line. This is a 30-pound braided line that I'm using here today. It's made by Tough Line. I'm going to run my line through that very first guide that I have here. And why I do that is so that I have something to guide that line down to my reel. If I didn't run it through that guide, it would be getting tangled up in my reel and I'd be having to hold it up along the rod while I'm trying to put this line on. So what I'm going to do here first is I'm going to take my braided line, I'm going to stick it right through the eye of that guide. So on the baitcaster reel, this thing has a level wind. And so what that means is that it levelly puts the line back and forth onto that reel. You see how it goes back and forth as I spin the handle here, just like so. Why that is, is so that you make sure you have it going back and forth to evenly place that line on that reel so it doesn't bunch up on one side and it makes it easy to cast after that. So I'm going to line that up right to the very center of that spool, just like so. So if it's off to the left or the right, I'm just going to spin it till it's right in the middle, just like that. I'm going to stick it through the eye. I'm going to go down and try to get it below the base of that spool, just like so. The best way to do this and the easiest way to do this is to just twist it around and get it to go below the spool come out the other end and actually grab it below the click bail here. This is the click, it rolls forward, that closes the bail. Now that I have that, I'm not gonna wrap it all the way around of course, but that gives me the tag end to work with. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take that, go back through the bottom of that spool, making sure I'm not going in between any of the mechanics of that reel. Give myself a nice long tag to work with here. Grab that line just like so. And now I have that full loop all the way around that reel. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my end that goes to my spool. I'm going to push against this here and it's nice to have either a little pair of scissors or something pointy, like a little pick or something to work with here. I'm going to reach in, grab my main line end that's coming from my spool just like so and give myself a nice little loop here to work with just like this. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this line over my main line, back around. I'm going to tie a simple clinch knot here. And what a clinch knot is, is basically just a normal fisherman's knot. So I'm going to hold that around. Here's my tag end, wrap around my main line from the top side of my reel. You can see that here, that's coming out the front through my level wind. I'm going to grab my line just like this, and I'm going to tie it to your simple clinch knot or fisherman's knot here. I'm going to go over one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven maybe eight just for fun. Now what I'm gonna do that I have that seven or eight wraps wrapped around that main line and I have my eye created right here by my finger. I'm gonna stick that line right back through there, pull it tight, grab my line and just slowly pull here till that knot forms. And you see how that's coming tight right there. And you wanna make sure you have a nice tag in here so that when you do finally pull this tight, it doesn't slip through. So now that I have this big loop tied all the way around that spool, you can see it here, just like so. 
I'm gonna actually take this top end, my main line going back to my spool line, pull it tight all the way down to the reel and pull it and cinch it down nice and tight so that it holds on to that spool there so that when we start to reel, that's, that reel is actually gonna turn that line on that reel and it's not gonna sit there and free spool. So I'm gonna hold that down, get that nice and tight there. Then I'm gonna take my Gerber scissors here, cut my tag in, and we're ready to go. So good thing to do again, get that nice and tight. Get that a nice little secure, nice little extra little tautness for comfort. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my main line up in my fingers, hold it about 12 inches or so above my reel, depending on what kind of rod you're using here. And I'm just gonna slowly start to spin this reel. And as you see here, that stuff starts to level and go and start winding itself back and forth levelly on that spool. All you really need to do with your reel, you can do any kind of thing where you put it on a marker or a pencil or something and kind of have it free spool, but I like to just lay it there either on the ground or on the tailgate or wherever you're doing your work here. And if it bounces around and, it's, and it skips around and goes around, let the cat chase it or whatever, but it's fine. It's not gonna hurt anything because you don't have that line wrapping in a certain direction like you would on a spinning reel where it would be twisting up and creating a line twist in that. It's going straight on here, just like so, straight down through your level line. So you're not gonna get those weird line twists. So I'm gonna hold that just like so and I'm just gonna slowly reel, applying just a little bit of pressure. You don't wanna squeeze too tight while you start to do this because what's gonna happen is you're gonna start to pull that line too tight on your reel and it's gonna make it very difficult to cast right away. So you wanna have a nice, slightly tight line in your fingers. So now that I have this started on here, I'm gonna turn my drag to make sure that I can't sit here and pull my line back off too easily and that I can actually spin my reel. What'll happen if your drag is too loose You'll see here, you'll start to turn, you're holding it in your fingers, and that, that spool isn't actually turning at all. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make sure my drag's a little bit tighter by pushing this thing forward here, which is your drag control. This is your brake, I'll explain that more in a bit. You're gonna tighten your drag a little bit so that you can't pull it away from yourself, just like so. You're gonna hold a little tautness on that line with your fingertips, and you're gonna start to wind that on there back and forth, just like so. Now that we're getting this thing about halfway full, what is most important of all is to not overfill your spool. Why that is, is because you wanna be able to cast correctly. You can always add more line onto your reel, but what you wanna do as you start to fill this up, one is not add too little, but two is not add too much. So you wanna get it right up to about just before, maybe a couple centimeters before the edge of that spool. And you, what the best way to do it is to actually put your thumb on that reel, and if it's level with that spool, you've usually put too much on there. If it's anywhere it's further down below that spool where you can actually feel the edge of that metal on your thumb, and this goes for any style of reel, you wanna add more line. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna keep going here. See, this is what I was talking about. It doesn't mind, doesn't matter if that thing's down there skeeting around. It doesn't hurt a gosh darn thing. I'm gonna keep filling this up just like so. And I'm watching the edge of this metal right here to make sure it doesn't start to overlap into my bearings. And go a little bit further here. And again, what I like to do too is while I'm doing this, I put my thumb on it, I see my comfort level. If it's too far up above here and I can't hold on to that correctly to use my thumb to help myself cast, I'm gonna take more line off. If I'm feeling that metal and it doesn't feel like it's full enough, I'm gonna put more line back on. So I'm gonna keep doing this here just a little bit more. Again, watching the edge of that metal, making sure I'm not going too far. And right about there looks perfect to me. Now, every reel is gonna be a little bit different for this, you guys, but you wanna just pay attention, use your thumb, and get that comfort level to where you know you can still push this bale down, one. You don't want it so full to where you can't actually clip that bale and open up your reel and you wanna be able to actually have enough to make a long cast or fight a big fish. So that looks just about right to me. Again, you can see right where it's getting just to the edge of the bearing there, right at the edge of the top of the spool. That looks perfect. So I'm gonna do, I got about a nine and a half foot rod here. I wanna make sure to have enough to fill my, my guides up. I'm gonna pull another five or six feet off of my spool here. Use my Gerber scissors, cut that off. And these Gerber scissors work awesome for cutting any kind of braid or Dacron. They're actually serrated a little bit, so they cut through that line really, really easily. So, now that I have that done, I'm gonna put the tip of my rod on. If it's a one-piece rod, all you're gonna do is just run it through the rest of your guides, but I have a two-piece here, so I'm gonna put that extra piece of the rod on, make sure it's not wrapped around. And one of the tricks I really like to use a lot to put these, this line through my guides is I actually take the line, I fold it over in half with about a foot and a half or two feet of my tag end still sticking out, 
I fold it in half, pull it tight, and I start to run it through my guides with that little bit of a bow. And why I do that is because once I get it through there, sometimes you'll either be stepping on the line, it'll be caught on something, and you'll let it go and it'll fall all the way back through your guides. And what it does, if you bend that over like that and you actually create that little crease, you'll be able to put it through your guides without it falling all the way back through. So I'm gonna run that through each of my guides, being sure not to miss them. And you wanna check this over because even the pros run their line through their guides, go to cast and realize they either missed one or two of the guides, just not paying enough attention. So hold your rod just like so, eyes pointing down. Slowly make sure you go through each and every one of your guides here. And we're ready to go. So the next step I wanna show you guys is adjusting your drag. Drag is very important. The worst thing you want to do is get a brand new fresh reel with good line, tighten your drag all the way down, cast out, hook your first fish and break it off immediately because you didn't play with and test your drag. So what I see here, usually you want about three to 10 pounds of pressure depending on what kind of fish you're fishing for. So considering that, I'm gonna tighten that up to where I start to feel it actually push tight. You can hear how the bearings or that click is kind of slowing down there just like so that's gonna mean it's getting tighter and tighter. If you're hearing it, these very quick, rapid clicks, it means it's loose. So I'm gonna go down until you hear those little bit tighter clicks, pull against that, that's a little bit loose still. I'm gonna go minuscule clicks after it starts to slow down. One, two, three, maybe. And that feels just about right. That's about four or five pounds of pressure. I'm gonna go a couple more, because we're fighting big steelhead here. I have 30 pound line, so that looks just about right. About eight to 10 pounds of pressure I have on there. With the style of fishing that I'm gonna do here today, this is not imperative, but I'm just doing my normal setup for the day, which doesn't, it doesn't actually attribute to any, every single kind of fishing out there. But if you're salmon, trout, or steelhead fishing and you're using a braided line, I like to add a little bumper on here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add a little 17 pound fluorocarbon bumper because I have that high vis line, and I'm gonna do a blood knot. So the way you do a blood knot, you look at those two lines across, you go seven wraps with the braided line along that fluorocarbon line. Just like so, I'm gonna take my index and my thumb, I'm gonna hold all those, all those wraps, pull that tight down into my fingers here, just like so. I'm gonna take my braided line, wrap it back underneath, in between my fluorocarbon and my braid. I'm gonna make seven wraps with my fluorocarbon line along that braid here. Just like so. And I'm gonna go back through this little eye that was created by these two lines conjoining. So what I have here now is both those lines, one going up, one going down through the middle of that gap. I'm gonna wet that line just a little bit, start pulling that tight, just like so. And there we have it, my uni knot. Or this is a blood knot, any uni knot, crazy Alberto knot, any of those knots you guys can find on our YouTube channel, go down in these links below, hit those knot tying tutorials and you can see every kind of uni knot that we have out there that we use for any different style of fishing. So now that I've done that, I'm gonna grab my two tag ends here. Make sure it's nice and tight. Cut those tag ends, just like so. Perfect. Now I'm just gonna put a little jig on here so that I have a little weight to cast to show you guys exactly how we wanna adjust this brake. So what we have here is just a little rabbit fur jig. This is what we call a twitching jig out here in the Northwest. I'm just gonna take my line, just do a normal clinch knot, kinda like we did onto our reel here. I'm just gonna do seven wraps back through the eye that I created like so. And we're not getting real technical with fishing here, you guys. I'm just showing you this so that I have something to cast with. And if you're just learning how to cast a bait caster, going out and using something like a half ounce or a three quarter ounce jig and practicing with it in the yard or in the lake is gonna make it a lot easier for you to learn the dynamic of this reel rather than putting a nice quarter ounce or a half ounce spinner on there trying to throw it and you're gonna, you're gonna immediately get those backlashes because it's such a light presentation and you have to have good form to cast it properly. So today, we're gonna go with something heavy just to show you guys for example. And what we're gonna talk about next is the brake itself. What I mean by the brake is this little knob that's right in here. Some, some higher quality reels have another brake that you can adjust on this side with a number sequence. One's tighter, one's looser. But this one here, we just have this brake on this side. So you can see, as I open that bale, right when I open that bale, again, this is what I consider the bale, this is the trigger. I open that bale, my line starts to fall. See what happened there? By that brake being too loose, that line instantly started to rat's nest. Some people call it rat's nest, some people call it a cat's ass. I call it a rat's nest, just to be politically correct. I'm gonna close that. If that happens, you pull that line out, you hold it with your fingers, 
hold it semi-taut, just like we were li lining this thing up, and I'm gonna bring it up and bring it tight again. So, now that I know that's going too fast, I'm gonna slowly adjust this to the right. Right, of course, going clockwise to the right is gonna be tightening. Left, going counterclockwise is gonna be loosening. So I'm gonna tighten that about four clicks, and I'm gonna open that bale again. And you see again how fast that fell this time, but it avoided getting that rat's nest in it. I know that's still probably a little bit too fast. I'm gonna do about another two or three clicks. And this is all before I've ever made my first cast. What you don't wanna do is go out with a brand new reel, make that first cast with your brake too loose and create that huge rat's nest in the base of your reel. So I'm gonna slowly do this with just dropping that half ounce jig one more time. Still a little bit too loose. Click that three more times. And I'm doing just minuscule clicks, you guys. I'm not doing big five, 10 click cranks. I'm just doing two or three at a time to make sure I'm just going through the motions, not giving it too much or too little. And you saw that time how it's going a little bit slower out of there and it's not making that big rat's nest when it hits the ground, just like so. I'm gonna go another two or three clicks just for safe measures. And what you want is a nice slow falling pace down to the ground, just to start with. You can loosen this brake up once you go to cast, but what you don't wanna do is have it too tight go to cast and it only goes a couple feet. You don't want to have it too loose to where it flies out there and it rats nests. So you want to go right in between by just slowly adjusting that brake. You want it to fall to the, to, the, to the ground at about a one foot per second, just like that. You see the difference now? Perfect. Just like that. You see how slow that jig's falling? And now we're ready to go make our first cast. So not always on your first cast when you put the brand new line on here is it going to cast perfectly. You're going to have to get that line, that proper tautness of the water portion and you reeling. So the first couple casts, you're gonna to wanna to thumb this reel a little bit more. And what I mean by thumb is I'm not gonna to go to cast and just completely take my thumb off the reel when I go to cast. I'm gonna keep my reel, my thumb on that reel, put my rod back over my head just like so, and I'm gonna throw it forward, but while I throw it forward, I'm gonna let go at that three quarter swing and I'm gonna keep my thumb on my spool ever so slightly so that I can gauge how fast that line is going off given the weight of the presentation I'm throwing. So. I'm gonna hold that, I'm gonna throw it out, just like so. And you saw through that whole cast there, that thing went way out there. You can get any rat's nest. It didn't go too fast. And what you wanna do a lot of the time is as soon as that hits the water, you wanna stop it with your thumb rather than let the reel stop itself. So what's gonna happen is that line's gonna hit the water. Your spool's still gonna be spinning at the same speed, but your, your actual lure isn't gonna be flying anymore. So that's why you're gonna stop it right before it hits the water with your thumb. So that casted really, really nice. It was a little loose. Actually, I could feel it going a little too fast. I'm gonna tighten it up two or three more times. And I'm gonna go ahead and try it again. Just like that. And you see how I stopped it right before it hit the water with my thumb? And that entire time, it was only going as fast as the lure was pulling it out. The, the actual spool of line wasn't spinning faster than the, real, than the, the jig was traveling. And that's the key there. Okay, you guys, so once you've gotten all that down, you've kind of come to the terms with how much line you want on there, how much of that brake you want set, and how you want your drag set, you're ready to cast a country mile. If you guys have any questions, be sure to drop them down here below. Give us a thumbs up if you like this video, and do not forget, subscribe and hit that little bell notification. Thank you so much for tuning in today, you guys. You guys stay fishy, and we'll see you out there.